Fortnite Update 1.22 is now available on consoles and PC. The patch for Epic Games' popular shooter has a ton of gameplay tweaks and some major bug fixes. One of the biggest additions is that Fortnite Battle Royale now has stats. These can be viewed in Battle Royale's home screen. Check out the Fortnite Update 1.22 patch notes below. General Battle Eye has been added to our existing anti-cheat detection way have increased the travel movement of the battle bus and increased skydiving velocity in order to offer an alternative strategy to jumping out of the bus at the first possible moment. Increased battle bus movement speed by 50% from 4,000 to 6,000, increased skydiving terminal velocity by 50% from 4,000 to 6,000, the final storm safe zone will now close completely instead of holding at a 10 cm radius. Players can now search supply drops without interruption from storm damage. Improve the pre-game warm-up UI to indicate the server is waiting for players to connect and battle bus launching when the lobby is full. Fix the glider occasionally not auto-deploying at the correct height. Fixed an issue which caused supply drops to become stuck in the air after player-built structures beneath them were destroyed. Changes from the live update on October. 6. Increased semi-auto sniper rifle damage by 50%. This weapon was often passed up because of its lower damage. This increase will put it closer in line with its intended effectiveness. Decreased scoped assault rifle damage by 33%. This weapon was too effective at its current role and needed to be scaled back slightly. Decreased grenade, grenade launcher, and rocket launcher environmental damage to 375 was 450. Metal forts will now require two explosive blasts instead of one. Late game bases are too easily destroyed and we want to promote building diversity. Increased rocket launcher reload time by 20%. It's a little too easy to spam rockets. We want the rocket launcher to be a powerful weapon, but it's a little too good right now. Increased submachine gun damage by 10%. The submachine gun is underperforming at close to medium range combat. This damage increase will improve its effectiveness slightly. We'll continue to keep an eye on it. Renamed several weapons. Renamed semi-auto rifle to assault rifle burst. Renamed semi-auto handgun to pistol. Renamed semi-auto shotgun to tactical shotgun. Fixed an issue which prevented explosive weapons from damaging supply drops. Fixed a bug which caused the pump-action shotgun to occasionally double fire. Fixed a bug which caused grenades to occasionally deal no damage. Fixed an issue which caused bullet impact effects to only be being visible to players in the immediate vicinity. Fixed an issue which caused the weapon reticle to disappear. Eliminations will now be awarded to the player who downs an enemy regardless of who finishes off that player in the DBNO down, but not out state. Increased health after being revived from the DBNO state. Health increased from 25 to 30, shields will no longer protect you from damage while in the DBNO state. You will keep any remaining shield if a teammate revives you. Friendly fire damage will now display the appropriate visual hit effects. Fixed squads finishing placement displaying the incorrect number in some cases. Fixed an issue which caused tires to bounce DBNO players. Fixed an issue which allowed traps to bounce players in the DBNO state. There is now a report player button on the end or match screen to report players. Critical hit damage on shielded players is now displayed in blue, like other displayed shielded damage numbers. The color of each player's marker in a duo squad are now consistent with everywhere they are displayed. Player indicators on the mini-map will now match the color. The player was assigned instead of all players showing as a cyan color. Changed the item drop icon on the inventory screen from a trash can to a drop arrow to more clearly indicate its purpose. You can now hold down shift before dragging an item to only drop one of that item. Teammates will no longer show up as eliminated when they are loading into the map. Fixed an issue which prevented eliminated players from mentoring text in the send feedback interface when using a controller. Added name labels to the map for existing locations. Tomato Town Dusty Depots LT Springs added a few structures near Tomato Town. Added new potential chest loot locations to the northernmost and southernmost wooden bridges over the river, as well as to Lonely Lodge in the container area to the west. Fixed certain basements being blocked, which prevented access to underground treasure chests and loot. Fixed issues which cause trees to float above the terrain. Fix some trees that previously could not be destroyed. General bug fixes and improvements to the world. We're continuously working on optimizing performance, and are actively investigating recent reports of lower frame rates in areas with dense foliage. Fixed multiple issues which could cause a brief freeze in game. 
fixed a significant hitch that occurred when the last player was eliminated from the game. Fixed a hitch which occurred after the Battle Bus skydiving phase completed. Reduced hitching on PlayStation 4. Audio addressed multiple issues which caused sound to only come out of the left or right speaker. Moved Battle Bus ignition audio into pre-game warm-up phase. General mix adjustments. Spectating fixed player directional hit indicators not visible while spectating Save the World gameplay challenge The Horde progression is now determined by the player's progress in the Save the World campaign If the player has finished Plankerton Outpost 3 in the Save the World campaign, then all of Stonewood and the first three Plankerton zones will be unlocked in Challenge the Horde mode. Quests now have a minimum difficulty rather than a required one. If a quest states complete Challenge 3 in a Rating 9 zone, the challenge can now be completed in any Zone 9 or higher rather than in a zone with 9 difficulty specifically. When entering a Tier 1, 2 or 3 zone, all challenges within that zone are now unlocked by default. This will make progressing through the mode quicker. All Outlander fragments now respawn between Horde waves. All of the remaining existing fragments are removed and new fragments are spawned at potentially new locations. Outlander fragments were spawning too far away in Horde mode. Now Outlanders should have more than enough time to gather fragments before each wave. Fixed an issue that caused the evolution choice between Shadow Shard and Obsidian to always default to the Obsidian evolution. Fixed an issue which prevented players from storing multiple stacks of building resources and ammunition in their Storm Shield storage. Players can now store multiple stacks of resources and ammunition in their storage again. Fixed an issue that caused players with certain video cards to experience extreme saturation during night sections. Fixed an issue which caused the smasher to continue to charge for too long if it has broken a piece of the environment or a building and there is nothing to attack within a reasonable distance. Fixed a bug which caused the amount of fortitude, offense, resistance, and tech shared between party members to be capped to a lower value than intended. Updated teleporter placement range by increasing starting teleporter range to 15 tiles, and reducing each teleporter range upgrade increase to 5 tiles. Heroes fixed a bug which caused Teddy and Shock Towers to one-shot monsters at high level, and allowed them to be damaged by effects like bees and poison clouds. Teddy and Shock Tower now use the environmental object damage model rather than character damage model. Increased the health of Teddy, Shock Tower, and Base, increased ability damage, health, and shield values on all heroes. All of these values increased depending on the on rarity of hero increased by 10% every 5 levels, to a maximum of 30% for uncommon up to 60% for legendary if these values were previously scaling relative to weapons without alterations and were falling well behind the curve at high levels as a result. No change at low levels, gradually scaling up with a difficulty. Hero abilities and gadgets will have greater impact on monsters at higher levels. Weapons will deal more damage to monsters quicker at high level. Adjusted enemy health and damage values as a result of the hero scaling changes no change at low levels. Increases gradually with difficulty. Monsters will damage players slighter slower at high level. When using Bull Rush to charge at a charging smasher, the ability will no longer be interrupted prematurely. Missions fixed an issue which caused the launcher to appear early in the Deliver the Bomb mission when a player joined an in-progress zone. Fixed an issue that caused some players to be unable to activate the bomb in the Deliver the Bomb missions. General fixed a crash that occasionally occurred when cancelling a game rejoin. Re-enabled support for DirectX 10 fixed several client crashes. Online matchmaking region is now available under the Game tab in the Options menu. This tool shows all available regions and a representative ping value at the time of login. We are working to improve this tool further to refresh ping values. You have fixed an issue that caused home base storm shield power levels to always incorrectly show a 0 out of 10, corrected a typo in the challenge the horde loading screen, corrected a few typos found in perk names for scavenger heroes. Updated names, descriptions, and bonus descriptors for all of the trap and weapon ingredient nodes on the Horde skill tree. Nodes now refer to the star level of the traps and weapons. Ingredients that you receive from each node are fully listed out. Reworded teleporter skill tree node description to include placement range. Source Epic Games